bird photography is one of those genres that a lot of photographers really get excited about. They want to get into, they want to try out, but sometimes it can feel a little bit intimidating. I know the first time I went out to photograph birds, I was a little bit out of my depth. I didn't know exactly what I was doing and I felt overwhelmed by the whole experience. I couldn't get good shots, they were blurry. I wasn't framing it right. I just couldn't get it to work properly. I was impatient. We're gonna cover all of the stuff you need to know to get started with bird photography, the kind of stuff you wanna have with you, where you might wanna go, some tips for kind of getting started and getting over that initial hurdle of getting some decent shots and how you can practice to become really good with your bird photography. Let's get into it. It's Tutorial Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each, week, each and every Tuesday, we bring you a brand new, fresh, photography tutorial this week we're talking all about bird photography and how to get started with it especially if you've never tried it or if you have dabbled a bit but it's just not working out you're not getting the shots that you want to go for first up there are lots of different ways to photograph birds photographing a robin sitting on a branch is a very different kind of experience and kind of different photograph than photographing a kingfisher catching its dinner and building, first of all, the right kind of expectation for the shots you want to get and also knowing what kind of shots you might want to be looking for are going to play a big part in actually being able to get those shots in the first place. There's a lot to consider when it comes to what gear you should be using, where you should be going and how you should be approaching it. So let's start off at the beginning, which is where I think most people are probably going to benefit the most when it comes to starting with bird photography. And this is heading out to somewhere where you know you are going to rely be able to take photos of birds. Now, they might not be the most exciting birds, but they're going to be there, and that's what's key. So, this could be a local park, a nature reserve, wetland area, even the seafront down by the sea, you'll get loads of seabirds. This is a great way to make sure you're definitely going to be able to photograph birds. They'll be there, there'll probably be quite a lot of them, and it'll be much easier to practice the craft of bird photography. This gives you essentially endless opportunity to track them in flight, to compose different kinds of shots, to practice not only getting to grips with autofocus and actually finding them and then tracking them yourself with your lens, but also getting to grip with how the camera and lens feels in your hand while trying to do all of that, how you might want to frame it up so that the bird is actually in frame, the right kind of settings you want to go for so that the photo isn't blurry. You're just going to be able to keep taking more and more shots until you start getting decent ones that you're happy with and then you can work out what you liked about them and go from there. So for example, a lot of these shots are taken in a park that is just local to me. It's really easy. There's always all kinds of birds there, you know, swans, ducks, moorhens, but there's herons. There's lots of different birds to photograph and it presents me with, like I say, endless opportunities to practice. That allows you to also work out what gear is going to work for you. So for example, I always like to have a tripod in the car if I'm going to go shoot these birds, I'd like to have a tripod with me, but I'm very rarely actually going to use it. Most of the time, 99% of the time, to be honest, it's handheld. That gives me the most freedom to spot the bird myself, bring my lens up and be able to track it and take the photo. I'm generally using something like my Sony a7 III as the camera, but of course, something like the a9, the a9 II or a Canon R5 or anything like that is going to allow you to shoot even faster to get those burst shots, which can be really helpful. And then in terms of the lens, that's kind of up to you. There's different levels you could go for. For example, if you have a 70 to 200, that might be absolutely enough to take certain photos of birds. Especially with a teleconverter, if you use a two times teleconverter, you're gonna have 400 millimeters of reach. If you have an APS-C camera, you're gonna be able to even get more reach out of it. Something like a 70 to 300 millimeter lens will generally be fairly accessible in terms of price point, but still offer you some really good reach in terms of photographing birds. And then of course, you've got the ideal stuff, 150 to 600, a 400 millimeter prime lens, a 600, 800 millimeter prime lens. Some of these can be a little bit more expensive, but you can absolutely start off with something like a 70 to 200. 70 to 200 F4 with a teleconverter, you're gonna be able to get some beautiful stuff with something like that. Now you can photograph the birds in flight and that's a good skill to hone so that when you go out trekking to find that kingfisher spot and actually want to take a photo of it in flight, you know how to kind of track it with the lens, you're familiar with your own equipment, it's gonna make your life a lot easier. But you can also take photos of birds while they're kind of just standing around, sitting around. Sometimes they can be in very interesting poses, you can get a great composition and that's the perfect chance to practice your composition and looking for the right kind of lighting as well. Small birds can be fantastic for this. They fly very, very quickly. So it can be difficult to capture them in flight, but sitting on a branch, 
sitting in the trees, that can look fantastic. And you don't necessarily need a particularly long lens to capture that. This one, for example, was taken on a 75 millimeter lens. Now, admittedly, it was an APS-C body, so that makes it a little bit longer, but it's still not horrifically long. It's not super zoomed or anything like that. It's it's pretty accessible. These kinds of birds will actually be all over the place. You'll find them in trees around your neighborhood. You'll find them in your local park. They'll probably be a little bit tamer in the local park. They're more used to humans, so it's easier to get a little bit closer. And this is where the biggest tip about photographing birds comes in, and that is patience. It is by far and away the biggest part of taking good photos of birds. When I go out and I try to rush it, I will never come away with good shots. It just doesn't work. I can't force it, I can't make it happen. You need to move slowly so that you're not startling the birds and so that you're also taking in as much of the environment as you can with your eyes, looking for any movement or any sign that there might be a bird you want to photograph. And you need to be willing to find a spot that you like and then sit and wait for the right thing to happen, for a bird to appear, for the right kind of moment to present itself. Now, of course, water is gonna help with that. That attracts birds, so it's gonna be a lot easier to find birds around water. So that's a good area to kind of set up. And this is something where you could set up, maybe you've brought your tripod, and maybe you wanna pop the camera on there. A monopod also works really well, so sometimes a little bit more flexible than a tripod. But like I say, for me personally, I'm gonna go handheld. And then we come down to things like settings. Generally speaking, I will start with a nice fast shutter speed. Something around 1 800th of a second, maybe 1 1,000th of a second, and maybe faster if the birds are very, very quick. That's gonna let me get a nice sharp image. The downside of that, of course, is the ISO is probably gonna to have to be bumped up quite a bit. Now, if you're gonna start taking a photo of a bird moving very slowly, maybe it's swimming through the water, or if you're gonna take a photo of a bird that is still, you could absolutely bring that shutter speed down. But for the most part, I'll then bring the shutter speed back up to a nice fast speed between shots. Because if I'm doing a fast reaction to a bird flying or something like that, I wanna make sure that my settings are right. Another tip that was always a problem for me when I started with this kind of thing, was that I wouldn't be checking my settings often enough. And by the time you then go to take a shot, it's a reactionary shot, if the settings are wrong, you're just gonna mess up the photo and you're not gonna have another chance at that particular opportunity. This is stuff you can really iron out at your local park, at the seafront, wherever you can find a lot of birds that you can just reliably keep taking photos of. So that when you go to that spot for the more exotic bird, for the more interesting bird, for that portfolio shot, you can make sure you know how you're gonna capture it ahead of time. Another huge part of bird photography is actually being able to find the birds you wanna photograph. Like I said, you can go to those nice areas where there's gonna be loads of birds, but if you want to go find a kingfisher or a woodpecker or a specific type of owl or hawk, you're gonna to need to know where to go. And to be honest with you, the best way to do that is to look online. There's lots of resources online to find areas where birds have been sighted previously, and that is probably the best way to work out where the kinds of birds you want to photograph are actually going to be. And once you've practiced your skill at your local areas, you can head out there, use that patience that we talked about as well. You've got the gear, you know how to use it, and now it's just waiting for that opportunity to present itself and then taking that opportunity as soon as it's there. Bird photography can be extremely rewarding because it is one of those, it's one moment, if you capture it, it's fantastic kind of genres of photography. And it is, ooh, it is so sweet when you get the shot. Now we could do a tutorial that's a little bit more advanced if that's something you'd be interested in, but I'd love to know if you have any tips for anyone getting started with bird photography, anything you think that I've missed here. I'd love to hear it down in the comments. You guys have got great, great insight into this kind of stuff, and I love reading that. So let me know in the comments if you do have any further tips. You can check out a list of equipment that we used for all kinds of shots in this video by checking out the links down in the description. It's all down there to go and check out. Don't forget to like and subscribe because there's new content all the time, but until the next video, Thanks for watching.